Picture yourself in the dimly lit theater, the air thick with anticipation as the screen flickers to life. The year is 1953, and the world is a canvas of black and white. And there it is, Beat the Devil, a film that would etch its name in the annals of cinema history. As the opening scenes unfold, you find yourself drawn into a world of intrigue, charm, and unexpected twists. The characters, each shrouded in mystery, parade across the screen, leaving an indelible mark on your imagination. Do you remember that moment when the story took an unexpected turn? The one that made you lean forward, eyes widening in sheer astonishment. It's those cinematic surprises that sear themselves into our memories, forever binding us to the magic of the silver screen. Beat the Devil had its way of playing with expectations, a dance of wit and deception that left you questioning every motive and every word spoken. And oh, the characters. Humphrey Bogart's charismatic presence, Jennifer Jones' enigmatic allure, and the eclectic ensemble cast that breathed life into the story. You couldn't help but be enamored by their performances, swept away by their charisma as they navigated a world filled with treasure, treachery, and the tantalizing unknown. As the plot thickens and the tension reaches a crescendo, you recall that feeling of being on the edge of your seat, fully immersed in a narrative that defied convention. The witty dialogue, the Hitchcockian atmosphere, every element meticulously woven together to create an experience that lingered long after the final scene. Now, let's step backstage and unveil the secrets that make Beat the Devil a true gem of its time. Delve into the random facts that add layers of intrigue to this cinematic masterpiece. Discover the anecdotes, the behind-the-scenes snippets, and the trivia that enrich your appreciation for the film. So, whether it's your first encounter with Beat the Devil or a cherished memory you hold close, let's journey together through the layers of this classic, unraveling its enigmas and reliving its magic. 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 Ma Unveiling the intriguing threads, Beat the Devil in the enchanting world of cinema, where tales are spun with light and shadow, lies the captivating story of Beat the Devil a film that not only graced the silver screen but also wove its narrative threads into the tapestry of literature and real-life camaraderie. William Styron, a wordsmith of his own league, breathed life into his second novel, Set This House on Fire. Within its pages, a cinematic tale emerged, a film crew's escapades echoing the very essence of director John Huston's troupe during the making of Beat the Devil. The cinematic art mirroring reality as the novel's setting of Ravello on Italy's Amalfi Drive harmonized with the film's primary backdrop. Amidst this celluloid dance, Huston, a maestro of storytelling, ventured a proposition to Humphrey Bogart, a thought that Lauren Bacall might grace the screen as his wife. Bogart's response, a playful rebuke, etched in jest and yet revealing a glimpse of the movie industry's intricate negotiations. Bacall's commitments elsewhere, including the filming of How to Marry a Millionaire, choreographed the destiny of roles. Delving further into the film's chronicle, Huston, the architect behind the movie's grandeur, maneuvered the film rights into Bogart's hands. An intricate web of partnerships emerged, with Romulus Films and Italian producers joining the ensemble. Santana Pictures, helmed by Bogart, embraced financial responsibilities, a pact sealed at a reduced fee, a testament to Bogart's dedication. Beat the Devil stands as an enigmatic monument in cinematic history, where the lines between imagination and reality blur. Styron's words echoed Huston's creation, and Bogart's camaraderie transcended into a business entwining nations. An orchestration of talent and circumstance, resulting in a masterpiece that continues to captivate. Sources cite IMDb in well-etched narratives, painting a vivid picture of the making of Beat the Devil. This celluloid odyssey, with its multi-layered narratives and alliances, forms a chapter not only in film history but also in the annals of camaraderie and collaboration. Truman Capote's Triumph in the Ring, a surprising tale from the set of Beat the Devil in the annals of Hollywood lore. The making of the 1953 film Beat the Devil stands as a testament to the unexpected, both on and off the silver screen. While the movie itself, directed by the acclaimed John Huston and featuring the legendary Humphrey Bogart, offered a comedic take on the capers of a motley crew entangled in a web of intrigue, it was the behind-the-scenes drama that truly raised eyebrows. One curious footnote in the history of Beat the Devil involves the screenplay's evolution. Claude Cockburn, the original writer of the screenplay based on his novel, laid the foundation for the film's witty narrative. However, the plot thickened when Truman Capote, known for his literary prowess, was brought in to contribute to the script's final touches. Rumors swirled that Cockburn either departed or was let go, paving the way for Capote's involvement. This unexpected twist added a layer of intrigue to the already enigmatic storyline. Humphrey Bogart, who starred in the film alongside his wife Lauren Bacall, did not shy away from expressing his admiration for Capote's unique writing style. Bogart once remarked, he wrote like fury. He had the damnedest and most upside-down slant on humor you've ever heard. Such praise underscored Capote's ability to infuse his distinctive voice into the script, a factor that undoubtedly contributed to the film's offbeat charm. 
Yet, it was a physical showdown rather than a battle of wits that left an indelible mark on the memories of those involved. Bogart, known for his tough guy persona, found himself facing off against the diminutive force of nature that was Truman Capote. The two engaged in an arm wrestling contest, with Bogart tasting an unexpected defeat. Not one to back down, Bogart challenged Capote to a rematch, this time with a $50 wager on the line. Capote, displaying an unexpected prowess, emerged victorious once again. A third match ensued, into the astonishment of onlookers, Capote emerged triumphant for the third time, this time in a full-body wrestling match. John Huston later recalled the spectacle, noting, he put Boji on his ass. He was a little bull. The unscripted physical clashes between Bogart and Capote not only provided an offbeat spectacle but also underscored the unexpected nature of Beat the Devil itself. In a world where scripts guide the narrative, these impromptu contests became emblematic of the film's penchant for defying expectations. As time marches on, Beat the Devil remains a curious anomaly in the cinematic landscape, a reminder that even in the meticulously scripted world of Hollywood, the most unforgettable moments can emerge from the unlikeliest of sources. And so, the tale of Truman Capote's triumph in the ring continues to be a footnote in the lore of a film that dared to be as enigmatic as the very characters it portrayed. 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 Huston's laughter echoes, the untold humor behind Beat the Devil in the annals of cinematic history. The 1953 movie Beat the Devil stands as a quirky testament to the unpredictability of both filmmaking and human nature. Directed by the legendary John Huston and starring the indomitable Humphrey Bogart, this film is not only renowned for its intricate plot but also for the unexpected moments that unfolded behind the scenes. One such moment captures the essence of the camaraderie between Huston and Bogart. During production, an automobile mishap befell Bogart, leading to a bloody mouth appearance that couldn't stifle the irreverent humor of Huston. Witnesses recall Huston erupting into laughter at the sight of his friend's not-so-serious injuries. In response, Bogart, ever the wordsmith, managed to mutter amidst his discomfort, John, you dirty, no good son of a beth. It's a candid snapshot of their relationship that adds a touch of humanity to the polished world of Hollywood. However, the real intrigue lies in the writing process of the film. Truman Capote, the literary luminary, demonstrated his versatility by penning the script on the set itself. Balancing his literary finesse with the unpredictable demands of filmmaking, Capote worked two to three days ahead of the shooting schedule, weaving a tale that seamlessly blended suspense and satire. His ability to capture the essence of the story in real time showcases the remarkable synergy between the creative minds involved. A severe automobile accident befell Bogart, leaving him with missing teeth and a hindered ability to speak. Enter a young British actor, renowned for his mimicry prowess, Peter Sellers. Reportedly hired by Huston for post-production looping, Sellers lent his voice to some of Bogart's lines. Today, this piece of trivia adds an intriguing layer to the film's legacy, though the authenticity of this fact remains a subject of speculation. As the reels of Beat the Devil continue to spin through the annals of cinema, these snippets of behind-the-scenes lore remind us that even in the meticulously orchestrated world of filmmaking, spontaneity and camaraderie often reign supreme. Dream. 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 Humphrey Bogart's discontent, a look into his complex relationship with the 1953 film Beat the Devil in the annals of Hollywood history. The 1953 movie Beat the Devil stands as an enigmatic gem, marked not only by its convoluted plot but also by the tangled emotions of its lead star, Humphrey Bogart. Reportedly, Bogart's unease with the film ran deep, perhaps rooted in the fact that he had invested a substantial sum of his own money into its production. This financial entanglement seemed to color his perception of the movie, leading to his purported dislike for the project. The film's narrative complexity is rivaled only by an intriguing inside joke that finds its roots in Yiddish folklore. The moniker Chelm, shared by two of the characters, carries a hidden meaning that adds a layer of whimsy for those in the know. In Yiddish lore, Chelm refers to a village inhabited by the so-called wise fools, characters who often display an ironic and unexpected wisdom despite their outward foolishness. Whether intentional or coincidental, this clever nod to Chelm enriches the movie's narrative texture. Bogart's candid words about his co-star Gina Lala Brigida further stirred the pot. He once famously quipped, the most woman I've seen for a long time makes Marilyn Monroe look like Shirley Temple. Such unabashed praise for Lala Brigida's allure only deepens the mystique surrounding the film and its cast. In retrospect, Beat the Devil remains a curious cinematic entry, not merely for its intricate storyline but for the interplay of personalities and circumstances that shaped its production and reception. It stands as a testament to the complex dynamics of showbiz, where financial stakes, artistic sensibilities, and interpersonal relationships all converge in the spotlight. 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 As we bid adieu to the captivating world of Beat the Devil, a cinematic masterpiece that has woven its enigmatic threads into our minds, it's time to pause and reflect on the tapestry of emotions it has unfurled. The year was 1953, and a tale of intrigue, wit, and unexpected alliances graced the silver screen. Now, as the credits roll once more, it's your turn to shine in the spotlight. 
Have you ever found yourself entranced by the enigmatic glances exchanged between the characters? Or perhaps you've marveled at the intricate dance of suspense and humor that keeps you on the edge of your seat even after all these years? Beat the Devil isn't merely a movie, it's a time capsule, a vessel that carries the essence of an era into our modern lives. Whether you first encountered this cinematic gem in a cozy vintage theater or through the flicker of a home projector, there's an unspoken connection that weaves us together. Maybe it's the subtle nod of recognition when the dialogue takes an unexpected turn, or the shared grin when a witty line lands perfectly. These are the threads that connect us across time and space, reminding us that the magic of cinema transcends the boundaries of decades. Now, as the echoes of Beat the Devil resonate within you, I invite you to share your personal tapestry of memories and thoughts. What scenes have lingered in your mind, becoming a part of your own narrative? Which lines of dialogue have you carried with you, ready to be exchanged in moments of amusement or reflection? Your unique perspective adds to the richness of this cinematic experience, making it even more vibrant and alive. Thank you for embarking on this journey through time and cinema, for allowing Beat the Devil to be more than just a film but a cherished memory. Your engagement breathes life into the tales of yesterday and transforms them into conversations that transcend time. So, dear reader, as you contemplate the allure of Beat the Devil and the mark it has left on your cinematic soul, I extend my deepest gratitude for your time and interest. Your reflections are the true testament to the enduring power of storytelling. Until our paths cross again, keep those memories close and those dialogues alive. Farewell for now, and may your cinematic adventures continue to be as enthralling as the classics we hold dear. Hold dear. Hold dear.